A decade ago, Boyden burst onto Canada's literary landscape. More days of cold, relentless, pelting rain than days of dryness. Each of his books a runaway success, portraying First Nations characters and exploring Canada's painful and hidden history. And I will always write about the First Nations of Canada. Son of a war hero, his rebellious youth in Toronto, his heritage native and Celtic. Boyden sometimes felt adrift between identities, an outsider. I'm kind of in between cultures in a way, and I was worried that I wasn't going to be accepted by either. His life still defies borders. Part of the year living off the land in Canada. I consider this my other home, but I have two very far away places that I live in. That other place with his young family in the vibrant, scarred city of New Orleans. And he's used his success to promote the Canada he sees. We're not exclusive, we're, we're inclusive. In the election, he took sides, backing Justin Trudeau, blasting the Conservatives. We need to stand up for our values. The niqab represents a medieval tribal custom. Their talk about barbaric cultural practices, of banning the niqab in the public service, for Boyden, poison. But now, with political change underway, I sat down with Joseph Boyden at the National Gallery in Ottawa. Joseph, so nice to meet hey, you. Hey, it's good to see you. So you kind of got involved in this election campaign. Why? Why did it matter so much to you? I, it, there's so many things. I, I, I live part-time in the States, part-time in Canada. You know, these are my, this is my home back and forth. And I watched, you know, I, I've watched American politics for 25 plus years and how they have just, the, the divisiveness, the ugliness, the, 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 the race baiting, the uh, so, so many negative, negative, negative things. And I was like, oh no, Canada is falling into the same trap that America is and I can't stand that. That's just one small part of it. Uh, well, you yep. used the word race baiting yeah. and when you endorsed Justin Trudeau you accused Stephen Harper of using the yeah. kneecap issue as race bait. It, it, it's, it's, it was. It was call to arms. You know, I think that Canada can't fall for this politics of divisiveness. Canada cannot fall into this politics of, of them versus us. And that's what I've watched in this country for so long, especially with First Nations. But then when, when, when it opens up into immigrants and, and who should wear what, you know, I should not be allowed to wear my niqab to, to a swearing-in ceremony, even though my identity is vetted beforehand. It's th what, what happens to the freedoms of religion, of, of, of culture, of, of choice? And, and when I watched, you know, uh, these kinds of actions and this kind of uh, uh, politics, I was really, really upset, so I had to speak out. I had to, you know? But race baiting suggests hatred. Yeah. Is it, is it, yeah. is that what you're saying? Or, or is it fear? It's well, fear of fear, change. Fear <laughs> and hatred, I've always argued and I tell people all that fear and hatred are one and the same. Uh, hatred stems from fear. And Stephen Harper is an incredibly smart man. There's no question. But he knows dog whistle politics. He knows when you blow the dog whistle. Tell me that the, the, the Barbaric Cultural Practices Act and a hotline to, to report on your neighbor is not race baiting. It, 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 is, it, is, it is dog whistle politics through a microphone. It's not even the dog whistle anymore. Do you think that there is a solution? We've seen these debates in Europe and yeah, people are afraid of, mm. of change. Like how do, you, how do you deal with this? <laughs> people are afraid of change. Be, you know, uh, uh, the, those in the know know that within 20 or 30 or 40 years, North America will no longer be a country where the white people are the majority, but the minorities are the majority. And, and, and this is coming, and this is where the Tea Party stemmed from in America. They see this coming and they're like, we're scared of change, we must put the brakes on it. And I saw uh, the conservative campaign try to step into that territory, and very poorly. Um, um, and, and we have to accept that this is a country of, uh, I call it a big loud family. Our country of Canada is a family where everyone belongs at the table. Somebody said beautifully that the idea of, of when you have so much, you don't build higher fences, you build a bigger table. And that's my Canada. Um, and, and that's the Canada I grew up in. That's the Canada my, my father and my mother and our, 
my 11, you know, I'm one of 11 kids, and you, know, you don't push somebody away or say no to somebody. You, you invite and you bring in, and that's what Canada is. And so the Harper government was defeated. So yeah. is everything like rosy now for you? No more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, every, yeah, the world is, it's a brand new world. No, but it's, uh, but I, and I mean this, a week ago I felt when I would speak out that I'm doing something dangerous when I dare to say, to speak against the status quo, I felt like I was in a, a place where I felt very uncomfortable. I felt maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And that's what made me push harder. Hmm. Because you know, a week ago, it was a different uh, government who, and my friends, many of my friends had said, yeah, no, this is, a, this is becoming a place where to speak your mind is a dangerous place. And th it made me have to speak out even stronger. You know, my father was a doctor and a combat physician and, uh, uh, in World War II, and he taught us never put up with bullies um, and never allow somebody to hurt somebody else. Uh, and, and so I had to stand up. I had to say, you know, this is a, my Canada, the Canada that I understand and know as a mixed race person is a Canada that is inclusive. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying everything is rosy, not by a long shot. We have a long way to go. When we have, for example, water boil advisories on small reserves in the north of Canada for not just months or a year, but 20 years, and nothing has been done about that. But is that going to change? Yes, I, I believe that at least he wants it to, his new administration wants it to, First Nations want it to, and I think Canadians are getting a better and better understanding of, 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 of some of these situations and, and, and what the situation is. There were um, lots of MPs, Native, Indigenous, ten, yeah. Ten new, the That's most... That's never I, happened before. Never happened before. Uh, indigenous vote turnout was the highest ever. It was, uh, they were running out of ballots on some reserves. It was so high. Um, and so, yeah, there's, there, it's a new, it's, a, it's you know, I, I like to say it's a new day. I think we, I really felt when I woke up that morning, having stayed up very late the night before to watch what was going on at my mom's house up near Perry Sound, I was like, yeah, it's a new day. It's a new chance. It's time to be inclusive. So are you glad you spoke out? Said you were nervous about it? I am because I, I, I didn't speak out to be inflammatory. I didn't speak out to say we're a racist country and get people all upset and, and, up and, and angry at me. I spoke out because uh, this amazing Nishnabe elder, Basil Johnson, who just recently passed, uh, he passed during the election. He, I called him my honorary uncle. He gave me my, my, my Nishnabe name, Wase Ashkong, and that means uh, he who enlightens or shining bridge. And he said to me, before he passed, Joseph, you've got to speak for people who can't. And his message echoed with exactly when my father passed when I was eight. Uh, Joseph, never allow a bully, no matter how big that bully is, to hurt the people you love. And, and I refuse to do that. So what, when I spoke out, I spoke from my heart and I spoke in a way that was emotional, but also I knew had the logic to back it up. Um, but I had to speak out for those who weren't able to or, and I think I said what a lot of Canadians kind of were feeling. We're very polite compared to Americans. Oh my gosh, in American politics during election season, all gloves are off. Um, in Canada, I was amazed at how people were almost accepting um, um, some of these more <laughs> really virulent and, 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 and angry and, and divisive kind of strategies and 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 i had to speak out you know um it's been lovely to <laughs> talk to you yeah, thanks thank you, you.